Graphs can be one of those slightly daunting words, but in a very basic sense, a graph is a visual way of linking two values or quantities using a set of what are called data points. Or in an even more basic sense, it's a picture showing the link between two different things. It should be fairly obvious what the two different things are in this case. If we're looking at distance time graphs, presumably a distance time graph is a graph, a picture showing the link between distance and time. There is a reason why we are following up the topic of speed with these distance time graphs, and that's because speed is literally the link between distance and time. So distance time graphs are pictures that show the link between distance and time, and also let us talk about speed as a consequence of that. Now, there's actually quite a lot that you need to know about graphs. The majority of this is going to come much later in the course, though. Distance time graphs is the first kind of tiptoeing steps into this sort of topic, and they are different and actually quite a lot easier than the other types of graphs that we need to know about later on. Distance time graphs are best explained through actually just looking at a couple of examples. So let's bring up a very simple one first of all. So what we can see are a set of numbers across the bottom and a set of numbers up the side. The numbers across the bottom, the 0 through to 5, are labelled as being the time in hours. And the numbers up the side, the 0 up to 80, are labelled as being distances in kilometres. And then we've got two lines. We'll ignore the two lines for the moment. So what we've got here is we've got a graph showing the link between time and distance. The two different lines are two different journeys. So the green line is one particular journey and the red line is one particular journey. Could be two people driving or walking. It doesn't really matter. They're two different journeys. There are various things we can unpick with this in terms of reading this graph. But what these lines are basically showing us is the link between time and distance at various points on this graph. If we look at this point here, first of all, the zero time and zero distance, well, that's the start of the journey. That sort of makes sense because at no time having passed, we haven't gone anywhere. So zero time and zero distance. No time has been covered. No distance has been covered. Let's look a little bit closer, though. Let's just focus on the green journey for the moment. We'll ignore the red one. Just stick with the green one for the minute. After one hour has passed on the green journey, we are at a distance of 20 kilometers. So after one hour, we have covered 20 kilometers. We skip ahead to the next hour and we skip ahead to two hours and we draw a line up to that graph line, the green line. Then we can go across to a distance of 40 kilometers. So after two hours, we have covered a total distance of 40 kilometers. So after one hour, we've covered 20, and after two hours, we've covered 40. Now, think about what's happening there. If we have covered 20 kilometers after one hour, and then another hour passes and we've covered another 20 kilometers, that means we must be maintaining a constant speed. After the first hour, we've covered 20 kilometers. So we are traveling at a speed of 20 kilometers per hour, 20 kilometers in that first hour. Another hour passes and we've covered another 20 kilometers. So we are still traveling at 20 kilometers per hour. If we were to extend that line so that we got to the three hours point, we would find that we have covered 60 kilometers and we would still be traveling at 20 kilometers per hour. The fact that we are traveling at constant speed is something that we can actually unpick from the graph without having to go through this looking at the data points. Because in fact, any line that looks like this one, i.e. a straight line, will be showing a constant speed. If the line was curved, then the speed would be changing because we'd be covering different amounts of distance in different amounts of time. But here, the line is constant, the line is unchanging in its slope. It is a straight line, and a straight line will show us that we are traveling at constant speed. And in fact, that is such an important part of these distance time graphs, we're going to make it the first of our things to note. And the first of our things to note is that a straight line in any direction means a constant, unchanging speed. But there is more that we can unpick from these graphs. So let's have a look at the same graph again. And this time, let's consider both journeys, the green and the red. 
Let's have a look at a distance of 20 kilometers and see where we're at. Now, if we look at the green journey first, the green journey, we have covered 20 kilometers after one hour, as we already said that. So we've reached 20 kilometers after one hour. Whereas if we look at the red journey now, which is a separate person, a separate journey, it takes us two hours to cover the 20 kilometers. That's more time. Now, if it takes more time to cover the same distance, that means we must be traveling slower with the red journey. To cover the same distance, it takes twice as long. So that means that the green journey has a faster speed because we reach the same distance in a shorter time. Looking at the two lines then, we should be able to unpick a property of the lines that's suggestive of that. Any time where we are covering the same distance in less time will mean that the line is steeper because we're taking less time to cover the same distance. The green line is steeper than the red line. The green line has a faster speed. So this can be the second of our key things to note. That the steeper the line, the faster the speed. Because a greater distance is covered in less time. So you will be further down the time scale, but further up the distance scale. Let's have a look at another graph because there's one more key point that we can pull out. So here is a different journey. This is a bit more complicated. The previous two journeys were quite simple, whereas this one is a little bit more complicated and there are different stages. But we can still break it down in the same way. Well, the first thing that we need to make clear is this idea. Well, first of all, the idea that the time scale is always along the bottom. It's the same for this one and the previous one. The time scale is always along the bottom and the distance scale is always up the side. And the distance scale, distance is often used as a shorthand. What we actually generally mean when we're talking about distance is distance from the start point or from home, if you like. So when we're at zero, we have gone nowhere. We're at two on the distance scale, that's two away from the start point. Four, four away from the start point. Six, six away from the start point, and so on. So we're always doing it in relation to a start point, how far away from a start point we are. If we were to look at, say, A to B, that's a particular leg of the journey, a particular part of the journey. A to B, for example, after five hours, because that's where we are on the hours scale at B, we have covered a distance of three kilometers. And we can track each leg of the journey. B to C is another leg of the journey. C to D is another leg. D to E is another leg. And E to F is another leg. Look at the part of the journey from A to D, that overall bit. After 12 hours, we are at point D. So we start at A, zero time, zero distance. At D, after 12 hours, we have covered 12 kilometers from the start point. So all of that is us traveling away from the start point. But you might notice that this time, E to F, if we were to skip ahead to E to F, well, this line slopes down. The question then is, why does it slope down? Is there something weird going on? Is it something about traveling backwards or something? Well, sort of. Actually, the downward sloping line isn't that much of a reach from what we've already got. If we just look at that E to F bit, we are starting at a distance of 12 kilometers away from home. And then we finish when we're at 20 hours at a distance of zero from home. So actually, all that downward sloping line is, is us traveling back to the start point. We've reached the furthest point and we are traveling back to the start point. If we were to think about the total distance covered then, well, we go 12 kilometers away from the start point from A to D. And then we come 12 kilometers back between E and F. So the total distance covered 12 kilometers away, 12 kilometers back. The total distance covered would be 24 kilometers. And that's important to note. There's another thing we can pick out here because there's something else weird going on with these particular parts of the journey. And that's these bits here. 
these horizontal lines between B and C and between D and E. What's happening here? Because we should be able to work out what's going on with these horizontal lines and why they're horizontal. Well, think about what's changing and think about what's not changing. Between B and C and D and E, time is changing. Time progresses because time always marches on, onwards and onwards, ever onwards, always marching forward, constant and unchanging. But what's not changing? At B, we are at a distance of three kilometers. At C, we are still at a distance of three kilometers. Time has passed, but distance has not changed. At D, we are at a distance of 12 kilometers. At E, we are still at a distance of 12 kilometers. Time has passed, but distance has not changed. In both cases, time changes, but distance doesn't. And if time changes, but distance doesn't, what's happening? Put a real world context on it, apply some logic to it. All it means is we're not moving. Perhaps we've stopped for a rest, toilet break, a picnic, stuck in traffic, it could be anything, but we're not moving. And this is the third of our key things to note. The horizontal line, flat part of the graph, means that we're not moving because time is changing, but distance is not. These three things will help us unlock any question on distance time graphs. So let's now have a look at a couple of examples. Rebecca went on a bike ride. This graph shows Rebecca's distance from home on her bike ride. So then we've got a classic distance time graph. We've got time in minutes across the bottom and we've got distance from home in kilometers up the side. Part A asks us how far had Rebecca traveled after 30 minutes? So what we need to do is we need to find 30 minutes on the distance scale. So I'm going to grab a pencil and a ruler and I'm going to draw a line up from the 30 minutes up to the graph. As soon as I've hit that line on the graph, I've hit that line on the graph here and I'm going to now go across from there to the distance scale and I'm going to notice that that takes me nicely to six kilometers. Part B, after 60 minutes, Rebecca stopped for a rest. For how many minutes did she rest? Well, she starts resting after 60 minutes here, and she finishes resting here. We know this is the part of the bike ride that she rests. Time changes, distance does not, and a horizontal line means we've stopped. How many minutes did she rest? Well, we need to work out what the scale is doing. Well, if we go one, two, three jumps up to 30, and then another three up to 60, and another three up to 90, and another three up to 120, that means each box must be 10 minutes passing. So we go 10 minutes here and 10 minutes here, giving us 20 minutes in total. Part C, how far did Rebecca travel in total? Well, she starts at zero distance from home, and then she travels 12 kilometers away from home on her bike ride. Then she rests a little bit, and then she travels all 12 kilometers back again, from the 12 away from home, down to zero back at home. Which means she travels a total distance of 12 kilometers away, plus 12 kilometers back is 24 kilometers in total. Dawn drove from London to Birmingham. She made one stop at a service station. Here is part of Dawn's travel graph. So again, we've got time across the bottom, but this time they are shown as times of the day rather than times in hours or minutes, say. And up the side, we've got distance from London given in miles this time. Part A asks us for how many minutes did Dawn stop at the service station? So we need to work out which part of the graph is the stopping. And we think back and we think, right, horizontal line means that we are stopping. Time is changing, distance is not. We're looking for the horizontal line. The horizontal line starts here and finishes here. So we need to work out how many minutes each square of the graph is showing us. Well, we go one, two, three jumps to cover an hour, one, two, three jumps to cover an hour, and so on. If each hour is covered in three jumps, that means that each square must be a third of an hour, i.e. 20 minutes. So we cover 20 minutes to get from 11.20 to 11.40, and then another 20 minutes to cover 
up to 12 o'clock, giving us 40 minutes in total, because each square covers 20 minutes. Part B, what was Dawn's average speed between London and the service station? Well, all this question is saying is, look at the part of the journey that is just from London until we get to the service station. What speed were we travelling at for that bit of the journey? She starts here and she hits the service station here. So these parts of the graph. She starts here in London and she hits the service station here. So this part of the graph, this first slope, is the bit that we are looking at. The distance covered in that section is 60 miles. The distance covered is 60 miles. The time taken to cover that, well she hits the service station here at 11.20, so the time taken to cover that is 1 hour and 20 minutes. We need to work out then the average speed in miles per hour. And this is where things start to get a little bit tricky, because there's some weird numbers going on here. We're working out speed so we could set ourselves up a table. So we could go for speed and journey. And we've got distance and we've got time. And we know that the time for the speed is always going to be 1. We can fill in the rest of that table though with what we already know from the question. So we know that the journey is 60 miles worth and we know that the time taken for the journey is oh, 1 hour and 20 minutes. Now that's quite tricky to fit in because we're dealing in hours. We want to be dealing in hours for the time and miles for the distance. So how are we going to write 1 hour 20 in just hours? Well 20 minutes is one third of an hour. Three 20 minutes make up an hour, so 20 minutes must be a third of an hour. So we've got one hour and one third of an hour, i.e. one and a third hours. We could write that if we wanted, or we could write it as a decimal, because that might be easier to put into our calculator. One third could be written as 0 0.3333333. So one and a third will be 1.333 dot, dot, dot. Or 1.3 recurring with the dot above the three if you prefer. We would probably grab our calculator for this question because it's a little bit tricky to do with that decimal otherwise. We turn the bottom line into a ratio, we turn the top line into a ratio, and we are missing something from that ratio on the top line. We start with the complete one, that's the 60 to 1.333 dot, dot, dot. We're going to be dividing by 1.333 dot dot dot. We're going to be dividing by that one and one third. So we're going to go on our calculator, 60 divided by 1.333. And that's going to come out, if we turn that into a decimal, as 45.011. The assumption being then that the numbers would be nice in this question and it would come out as 45 miles per hour. There is one final way we could look at that question. And that would be to say, well, yes, we need the speed given to us in miles per hour, but maybe we could work in minutes throughout. So that rather than work in time as hours, work in time as minutes, which means we'll need to change this, because this works on the assumption that we are looking at one hour. But maybe instead we could look at 60 minutes, rather than looking at one hour. And then, when we put the journey time in, 1 hour and 20 minutes, we could put in as 80 minutes. Why is this helpful? Because when we turn these into our ratios, and we've got the blank here, maybe we can't get directly from 80 minutes to 60 minutes, but we could go via something else. We could always say scale down to, for example, 20 minutes. How do we get from 80 down to 20? We divide by 4. So we could do the same here. Divide by 4. 80 divided by 4 gives us 20 minutes. 
and 60 divided by 4 will give us 15 miles covered. But then surely we could just scale up again to get from 20 minutes to 60 minutes. How do we get from 20 to 60? We times by 3. Times by 3 here. 15 miles times by 3 is 45 miles. 45 miles in 60 minutes gives us 45 miles per hour. Because the 60 minutes we can then change back to 1 hour. Part C. Birmingham is 120 miles from London. Dawn arrived in Birmingham at 1400. Complete the graph. So, 120 miles from London, that's here, and 1400 here. So, we need to be up from 1400 at the 120 miles bit. We need to be here by the time we get to 1400. So, all we need to do is draw in the line from this point here to where we are already at. Speed has changed, but that's okay, because presumably something happens in the journey to make her go a little bit slower. 